Hair thinning can be a tricky process psychologically because it happens gradually. When it starts, we notice it but may not really want to deal with it. So we dismiss it, even though the early stage is the best time to treat it. 90% of the time, hair thinning does not go away on its own. It progresses slowly and consistently. By the time it advances, we can't ignore it and we start to panic. In the last video, I showed you a close-up view of what it looks like when your hair is thinning out. If you're a visual learner, that video is for you. So in this video, I'm going to go over potential culprits that can cause your hair to thin. Remember, hair thinning is a slow process. Before we get to the list, let's talk about inflammation a bit. Inflammation slows down the activity in your hair follicles, causing them to produce thinner and thinner, drier and drier hair strands. Inflammation also slowly makes your hair sparse because it eventually kills actual hair follicles as well. When you hear the word inflammation, you're probably thinking it's something you can see, like a swell or bump. That's true, but did you know most inflammation is not seen or felt? Yes, inflammation is bumps. It's redness, it's a rash, and it's flakes. It's also itchiness, tenderness, soreness, and any type of pain. But what a lot of us don't know is that most of the inflammation in our body is not obviously seen or felt. Scalp inflammation affects the epidermis and the dermis layer of the skin. All the work that takes place to create a hair strand happens in the dermis layer of the skin. So inflammation is a real and very common silent killer of hair. All four of these culprits can cause inflammation. So let's go over them and what to do about it. Amongst other ingredients, due to all the waxy emulsifiers in them, creams are probably the worst thing you can put on your scalp. As I mentioned earlier, the system within a hair follicle is alive. In fact, your whole scalp is alive. It's very active compared to other areas of skin. So as long as it's interacting with the environment, it's also very self-efficient. Using creams on your scalp is like playing Russian roulette. It can throw off your microbial activity and make way for bad bacteria to flourish. It also clogs up your hair follicles. Both issues lead to the same result, inflammation. So if you have to use creams in your hair, avoid your scalp. Start an inch or two away from your scalp to be on the safe side. The best thing to do is to use a liquid and oil to moisturize and lubricate your hair. But if you do use a cream, opt for a more thinner, more liquidy type. They tend to have less emulsifiers in them. Most importantly, cleanse your scalp and hair consistently to remove accumulated buildup. No matter what type of products you use, buildup will accumulate. The thicker and more synthetic your products are, the more you should be on top of this. Tension may seem to be an obvious one, but the type of tension I'm talking about is not. The idea of tension tends to be super under-exaggerated. We only seem to look at the extreme cases, but when I'm talking about tension as it relates to hair thinning, I'm talking about any form of tension. It's not just the extreme cases, it's all and any form of tension. Check this out, we're so unique. Our hair isn't just unique on the surface. Under the surface, our hair follicles are also unique. Unlike literally every other hair type, our hair follicles are not straight. They curve. There's no uniformity in the positions of our hair follicles. It seems like every part of us has a lot of character and diversity. Anyway, because of that, our hair grows almost parallel to our scalp. So as you can see, our hair strands shoot out from every direction. It's way easier to cause tension to our scalp compared to straighter hair types due to the way our hair strands emerge from our scalp. There's already tension at the base of each hair strand. Our hair wants to grow up and out and it needs plenty of space to do that. So every time we try to flatten or pull our roots in any way, it puts even more pressure even more irritation to every base of every hair strand. 
our hair is very sensitive to tension of any kind. Tension is one of the quickest follicle murderers out there, and the type of hair loss it causes is usually permanent. This is our hair. It's the most voluminous hair type in the world. Nothing comes close. So it's very easy to inflict tension to it. It wants to be big, it wants to be bulky, and it wants to gain more and more volume. So inflicting any tension to this hair type is detrimental. Once I started realizing this, my hair bulked up to a new level. Now I stay away from tension by allowing my roots to be bulky. I start my twist about two to three inches away from my scalp. I opt for loose twists, not tight twists, and I never try to reduce the bulk when I'm putting my hair up. So if you wanna preserve your hair follicles and density, avoid tension like the plague. It's very, very important. I'm gonna be posting a video soon on how I bulk up my hair with my hibernation method. Did you know your scalp and hair follicles can suffocate? It's not like how our lungs suffocate. It's a lot slower and gradual. Hair follicles are alive. So they too need air, they need the sun, they need to interact with the environment, just like us, and just like our skin. So try not to wear headscarves and bonnets all day, and opt for a thinner, more breathable material. Let your skin, hair, and scalp interact with the outside environment. You may not be able to see it, but your skin, hair, and scalp are constantly adjusting and interacting with the environment microbially and ionically. It interacts with the tiny microscopic water molecules in the air, and it also interacts with the UV rays from the sun. It wants to take up space and be involved. So go outside, go to the beach, or take a hike on a trail. Soak in all those negative ions, not just for your hair, but for your mind and your whole body. Heat damage doesn't just happen to your hair strands. It also happens to your scalp. Direct heat from blow dryers, hooded dryers, steamers, and even hot water can cause injury to your hair follicles. I made the decision to stop using hooded dryers and steamers for this reason. I noticed that my scalp would get uncomfortably hot under a dryer. I also realized that my hair doesn't really need extra external heat for a conditioner to penetrate. For me, a shower cap for 30 minutes or so is better. My hair has definitely become denser after deciding to stop using hooded dryers and steamers. I also stopped using hot water to wash my hair a long time ago. Trust, I know it's tempting, but water that's too hot can be damaging to your scalp, hair, and skin. I posted a heat series to show exactly how to select the right blow dryer for your hair, how I protect my hair from heat damage, and the blowout method I use to avoid heat damage on my scalp and hair. There's definitely other potential culprits in these four things. These are just the ones that are a little easier to miss. So if you can think of others, help another sister out and mention it below. Think of your scalp as very sensitive skin with large pores. It's a door to your internal body, so it's important to keep it healthy and to encourage it to continue to be self-sufficient. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.